This video is to show how the Winchrack Type 2 filament rewind spool can be built. I must emphasize that I didn't design this myself. Details of the design are in the comments, along with the location of the SKLs and a full bomb. We can start by laying out all the parts ready for printing. I would suggest the majority will be printed in PETG. However, the main spool could be printed in TPU to increase friction. The cost per unit is around 13 US dollars or 20 Australian dollars, excluding the cost of plastic and the few screws that are needed. Here's all the parts for the build, with the one piece that I suggest reprinting in TPU. This small piece I suggest printing in a dark colour to ensure it blocks light correctly for the opto-isolator. This is the stock V2 rewinder. You'll find its STLs in the V2 folder. Here's the version of the side taken from the weights version in the weights folder. I'm going to do this build using these sides because I like the extra strength in the top bar. Here are the parts that need thread inserts. It's obvious which ones they are by the holes which are all identical in size. The first part of assembly is the motor unit, which you can see here sandwiched between two of the printed parts. The motor assembly rotates on this small bearing. To avoid any rubbing on the side, I would recommend having the bearing protrude by about half a millimetre, as can be seen here. Here we can see the roller has been attached. This is a strong pressure fit. With the motor assembly fastened to the body, you can see the small amount of movement that's needed to pivot the roller. Here are the two five port electric connectors on the side of the unit. I've actually added another two three point connections just to the end here to assist in the wiring of the motor along with the two solenoids. Having added the two solenoids, you can see here the movement of the motor when the solenoids will pull together. And here you can see the connection of the motor and the two solenoids to the additional connector blocks I've added at the back. Next I've added the MOSFET using two tiny self-tapping screws. The yellow lead you can see is connected to the trigger. The two leads leading down here are the out leads going to the motor. And the two leads leading from the top are the in leads, and they are currently just connected to the side five point connectors. At the other end from the motor, we have the sensor detection assembly. This slides between four bearings, triggering the opto-isolator as the filament moves forward. On the rear of the unit, you can see where the opto-isolator fits. This is where the black slither of plastic gets inserted to trigger the opto-isolator. This slides backwards and forwards with the movement of the filament. The filament will route between three more bearings. This cover encloses the bearings. And here you can see the hole for the bearing for filament runout detection. A micro switch is placed over this. We can quickly assemble the three parts and three bearings. So here's the assembled unit with the three bearings inside. Note the micro switch hasn't yet been added. And here's some filament 
entering from the spool side. So I add the micro switch and here it is on the sliding unit. It's able to slide forward and backward, but its movement is limited by the black tag that's been inserted in the rear, which will trigger the opto-isolator. Note that there are two mounting plates for the opto-isolator, depending on which one you choose from the bill of materials. And here it is mounted to the side panel. You can see here the lead from the opto-isolator is actually catching on the side. And for that reason, I've had to cut a small indent to fit it. However, there's a redesigned version of this in the STLs pointed to in the comments. Here we have the unit almost fully assembled. All the wires have been connected and tidied up a little bit with zip ties. Currently, there's no Bowden tube and the unit is working. You may find you have to switch the positive and negative on some of the wires to ensure the motor is turning in the right direction and the two solenoids are correctly triggering. So here's the unit fully assembled. As already mentioned, there is a replacement side panel to give the opto-isolator a little more room. Alternatively, you could not use the connector and instead solder the wires to the isolator. To the rear of the unit, there are holes for screws. These can be used to limit the movement of the two solenoids, trying to maintain a maximum of about one or two millimeter gap when not rewinding the spool. You can see here, I've added some tape to thicken the TPU rewind spool. I suspect my printing in TPU has made it a little too small. To compensate for this, my STLs now include a version of the file that's about one and a half millimeters thicker. Note that I've not yet connected any PTFE tube to my second build. I will cut this to length once it's actually installed. Finally, we can add a spool, thread it through, and give it a test. There's still no PTFE tube, but fortunately, the filament is stiff enough to work without. For my implementation, I want to mount these to 2020 extrusion. So I've made a very simple base plate which clips on and off to the rewinder. The four holes are for M5 bolts to connect to the extrusion.